Monday at 3-0 puts them atop the 16 Group B. The top four will advance. A win today for the U.S. and they will clinch the top seed in Group Number B. With Fran Fraschella, I'm Mark Kestesher, and speaking of numbers, Kevin Durant's numbers have carried the offense for Mike Krzyzewski. They have, Mark. He's been everything Coach K could have hoped for, leading them in uh, scoring, averaging seven rebounds a game, doing it on the defensive end. Kevin Durant so far has been brilliant in this tournament. And while he's been brilliant, certainly a lot of things to work on over the last couple of days. Let's take a look at some of the strengths and weaknesses through three games, and some of this really goes back to five weeks ago in camp began. Absolutely, and half-court execution is important. It reared its ugly head against Brazil. This is one of those games where if you get a big lead, slow the pace down a little bit, maybe in the second half, and run some stuff that you're going to need to run next week in the knockout round. Well, today's opponent, Iran, they played in the Olympics in 08. This is their first world championship and a 7-2 NBA backup center, Hamed Hadedi. Absolutely. He's played very, very well in this tournament. Dropped 27 on a pretty good Croatia team. He's the third string center for the Memphis Grizzlies behind Marc Gasol, Hashim Thabit. But uh, he has really played well, and he has a lot of international experience, Mark. Let's take a look at the lineups. Also a name to keep an eye on, number 12 for Iran, Arsalan Kazemi, who just uh, finished a pretty good freshman season at Rice University in Houston. He sure did, playing for Ben Braun. He was all-conference USA freshman team. Very athletic, sneaky, quick jumper. He'll have his hands full today, but what a great experience for a guy going back for his sophomore year of college. All right, that's a look at Iran. We have the same starting five for the U.S., but a lot to talk about after the two-point win over Brazil. And again, a very young team trying to find its way. We could take the glass half full or the glass half empty. How do you look at this team through three games? Uh, you know, being a, being a coach, I take the glass half empty. The, the non-existent offensive schemes on Monday really almost cost Team USA some issues about pick and roll defense and then keep this in mind the the bench only played 39 minutes combined six points five rebounds that was supposed to be a strength of team usa in this tournament shake of hands uh, lamar odom making his way around to the officials as we are just about set to begin in istanbul uh, the u.s heavily favored to beat iran tomorrow they have uh, the first game off against Tunisia in this group to round out preliminary play. So for Coach K in the U.S., a chance to work things out against teams they're expected to defeat. Well, and not only that, Mark, but if they win today, obviously they clinch the top seed, and that means they will not play until Monday. They'll have a little bit more time off to rest, recover, and to practice. And we're underway in Istanbul, and Iran will get the first offensive set. Mehdi Kamrani leaves the offense number seven. A very solid little guard. Shoots it off the dribble. This is Kazemi, who's got an array of talent. Big body at 6-7. Shot clock already at 4. And a turnover by Iran early. And this was one of the problems for Team USA, and that's not necessarily a transition opportunity, but in transition they were having some problems as well with turnovers. 22 turnovers in a 40-minute game versus Brazil. Many of those turnovers unforced. How much do you think the game in Brazil really sticks with these guys moving into this game today? Well, I don't think it's going to stick. Listen, if they lose this game, it's the biggest upset in international play in a long, long time. So they're going to win this game. But it's a matter of how they win the game. And are they getting better? Can they take anything out of this game and tomorrow that will help them in terms of next week and to me it's about execution offensively Chauncey Billups picking up the game's first foul here's Haddadi has got some post moves down low we'll see how it works against the experienced NBA Americans Davari with a long shot miss wide right right into the arms of Kevin Durant well coach Krzyzewski giving the team the entire day off yesterday no practice chance to sleep in get back at it again with the two bottom teams of group B Derrick Rose cut off. Three-pointer Durant. Did not go down. Well, Kevin Durant's actually shown some good three-point shooting in the tournament so far. Yes, he's had. And, and that possession was a pretty good possession. A lot of touches. Ball moved, and obviously anytime you can get Durant an open shot, that's a good thing. So not the start the U.S. was hoping for against Iran. Picked up its first ever world championship victory as Haddadi misses the shot. They beat Tunisia. 
71 to 58, a game they nearly blew a 24 point lead. And the first basket of the game will go to Kevin Durant and a chance for a three point play. Well, that's going to be an issue all day for Iran is that they don't have the athleticism to get back and build that half court defense. And that time you see Durant gets behind the uh, couple white jerseys. Haddadi's leading the tournament in block shots at almost four per game, but that's got to be another scary issue for Vaseline Matic, the head coach, is can they keep him out of foul trouble? That's a big factor. He's actually, as we talked about, he's been very, very solid in this tournament. Iran, which did not pick up a win in the Olympic tournament, picked up its first with the win over Tunisia. And now Haddadi with the basket. And the Iranian fans enjoying it in Istanbul. Coach Matic is a Serbian coach. This team is overmatched, but watching them play early in this tournament, they are well coached and run some good offensive sets. Good example right there. And there's the poke away by Kamrani. This guy would be equivalent of a very good mid to high major guard, Kamrani. And a traveling violation against Haddadi will turn it back over to the U.S. Haddadi's a guy that uh, the Memphis Grizzlies found at the Rocky Mountain Review, the, uh, the old Utah Jazz Summer League back in 2008. They followed him through the Olympics and signed him, and he's in the third year of a three-year deal. He's a backup center at best in the NBA, but when you're 7'2 and you've got a little bit of skill level, he's a good guy to take a chance on. Well, Iran's been very feisty defensively. Uh, got a lot of hands in the passing lanes. And look at yeah. Mehdi Kamrani getting his hand in there. Now, when you play Team USA, you, you almost play out of fear because you don't want to get blown out. You get everybody's best shot if you're Coach K's team. You know, when that schedule came out and they know they drew into Group B, they circled this one on the calendar. And a chance to take a lead almost three minutes into the first quarter. Now, the offensive troubles that plague Team USA having some other issues here against Iran. Watch out. That's what he does. Very good off the dribble. Smart. He has struggled, Fran, in this tournament from long distance. Four of 18, but hits there to give Iran the lead. And a foul before the drive. Derek Rose will pick it up. Well, the U.S. scored all of nine points in the fourth quarter in the win against Brazil. You can give a lot of credit to their defense coming through. Coach K gave a lot of credit for these young guys hanging in there against a tough team. But again, the offensive yeah. issues continue. Yeah, you know what? Coach K, was, that was he was right to credit Brazil. But honestly, now, we know there was very little ball movement and a lot of standing around. And Let's see. Shot. Kevin Durant is such a brilliant player. But he's really not even an isolation guy in the NBA. He's probably as good moving off screens as anybody in the league. You can't just ask him against the quality teams to be a one-on-one -on -one guy every single night. It'll work today, but it's not going to work next week. And the U.S. with uh, only two more preliminary games today and tomorrow before getting ready for the round of 16 in the knockout round and a loose ball foul underneath. And that's going to go on Lamar Odom. This guy, uh, Haddadi, is a very popular guy in Memphis. Uh, people have embraced him in that town. They understand the, the issues you have when you come from a, a different country and you're 7'2", and also a country that, you know, he had, some, he had some trepidation about how he would be received because he's the first Iranian to play in the NBA, but it's been a warm welcome. Obviously, the political tensions between the countries for now three decades and a quiet trailblazer in his own right as it last touched by Javad Davari to Team USA. Now Davari gives Coach Maddich two point guards. Two guys that can handle the ball. And another U.S. turnover is uh, Andre Iguodala. Goes off him. Kevin Love and company. Uh, well, they hope to help out that second unit for Team USA. Again, a lot of one on one. It's so hard, Mark. I said this the other day. It's so hard to play one on one in international play because you're playing against a set defense. There's no NBA three second rule, so there's not as much space. 
Nabi Poor with the shot from the wing won't go down. Musad Nabi Poor, a 6'11 center. Iran going with two big guys and a big basket, a three pointer for Andre Igadala. Nabi Poor hadn't played much in this tournament, but obviously Vaslin Matic realizing he wanted to put some size out there against a smaller U.S. Uh, squad. Maybe take advantage of uh, that, but sometimes size and, and the lack of quickness can be a disadvantage. And a near turnover for Iran. Arsalan Kazemi beating the shot clock buzzer. Shot won't go down for Iran. It's a little transition play. Lobbed for the Ram, but a little too close for Kevin Durant. Well, the U.S., uh, very inexperienced team, as you well know by now. Six players, 22 years of age or younger. Two of them are 22, the other four are 21. And really, Fran, it's only, I know we, it sounds like you're making excuses, yeah. but they're still trying to get together in a very short amount of time. Well, and you know what? Honestly, Mark, there's a lot of young teams in this field. There really are. You know, Serbia is very young, Croatia's young. I think right now, the thing that I look at as a coach is the style of play we're playing. In my mind, we may out-athlete teams next week. I just don't think we're going to out-execute them, and I would be concerned about that, honestly. And at this stage of the game, it's probably too late to make too many right. vast fact, adjustments. You can give them a day off yesterday, that's fine, but I, I, I think they need to practice some half-court offense. And I know I'm, I know I'm being critical, but... I've just seen this this movie before. Right. Chauncey Billups getting inside for a bucket for the U.S. Chauncey's been very, very good as of late. Obviously, he's a terrific NBA player, but he really knows how to use his body in the lane. Team Iran down five points. This is Javad Davari, and he's fouled on his way to the lane. Tomorrow morning, ESPN2, you can find us 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. The U.S. against Tunisia, the only country in Group, three, group B without a victory. And so the U.S. Uh, finishing up its preliminary round action with the two bottom teams in the group, a chance to warm up for what appears to be the top seed in Group B. And also a reminder, all 80 FIBA games also available on ESPN3.com, a great way to follow this tournament because things are getting very interesting as we look around what else is happening all throughout Turkey. Uh, that's exactly right. Spain right now struggling with uh, Lebanon. Spain has been probably the major disappointment in this tournament thus far. Only one and two with losses to Lithuania and France. We've been all we've been all over ESPN three, haven't we? Yes. Watching games from the various sites that outside of Istanbul. All the uh, 16 remaining teams will be making their way to Istanbul, and the Olympic Dome will be the site of the round of 16. Uh, Tyson Chandler getting some minutes in the game, drawing a foul from Hadani and headed to the line. Uh, we chronicled the fact that the bench was really anemic on Monday. Only 39 minutes among seven players, six points, five rebounds. And you know, as a coach, Mark, as a coach, you can always tell how a coach feels about his team, especially a new team, the first time you're in a close game. And if you think back to Spain in the exhibition game and then against Brazil on Monday, those were both situations where starters played almost 80 minutes of the game. So if you're a guy like Gay or Chandler coming off the bench now, you got to say, hey, does, does Coach K have confidence in me? That's why these minutes are so important. And they get a chance to do what they can do. And you've seen those guys. I mean, they're young in NBA years, but can that affect? Oh, it affects their mind, yeah. no question. You know, the first time Rudy Gay touched the ball today, what did he do? He shot it. Right. Because you don't know how many you're going to get? For a score, that's the mentality. Tipped by the U.S. across. Well, it's been a short shot clock for Iran of late. Three-pointer won't go down. Kazemi skying for the rebound. He's he's not a perimeter guy yet, Kazemi, but he's really athletic. And Hadadi's showing some range from outside. He's even hit a couple of three-pointers yes, in has. this tournament. Going the other way quickly, Eric Gordon for the basket. Well, Eric Gordon's a guy that got off to a great start early in this tournament, and we didn't see much of him. And again, that power and strength at the rim, 
along with his outstanding shooting ability. Durant goes for the steal. Haddadi on the block. Elrond giving the U.S. Uh, its best shot here in the opening 10 minutes. Now this would be a moral victory right now for Iran if they stay close at the end of one. U.S. really cheats out on defense yes, they and there do. comes through with a basket, but a intentional foul against Iran. Here's a look at Ahmed Haddadi and Rudy Gay, both with the Memphis Grizzlies. Haddadi, as Fran pointed out, the first Iranian-born player in NBA history. And so those two uh, know each other very well. That foul by Kamrani was deemed a, it's almost like a clear path foul in the NBA. Now you can foul a guy to stop a break, but if he gets out ahead of you and you grab him, it's an intentional foul. It's a, it's a rule that's really a combination of the college rule and the NBA rule. And both teams will be in the bonus for the final two minutes and 45 seconds. As Derek Rose will go to the line. So you've watched this team now for almost a little over seven minutes of action. What are you seeing so far from this team on the bounce? Back? You know, it's it's not uncommon. This is like a this is like a 15-2 uh, seeded game in the NCAA tournament. USA is trying to blow Iran out right now. Iran, on the other hand, who is well coached, is trying to run their offense and shorten the game. That's difficult to do over 40 minutes because ultimately you have to make shots. And, and you know, Mark, uh, I, I love reading the blogs. We have a guy, J.H., uh, the painted area. Great yes. blog this week. I hope I said his name right. But <laughs> he made not, a, no blog about it. But he made a great point about teams in Europe and international play. They run their offense like the Utah Jazz run it. Very crisp, disciplined, a lot of touches. And that's why the Jazz give teams in the league, you know, Jerry Sloan's team gives teams so much trouble. Team USA is not used to guarding all 24 seconds of the shot mm. clock, in my opinion. Eric Gordon for three. Offensive board back to Gordon. And the shots are not going down for the U.S., which has an entire second unit on the floor right now. Steph Curry there, feeding it to Gay, and he'll throw it down. Now, now this is good. Team USA is going to pressure Iran. There will be many turnovers today and a lot of easy baskets. And that in itself is a positive. All the way down and trying to pass out Mehdi Kamrani, but turns it over for Iran. In the victory against Tunisia for Iran, they had a 24-point lead late in the third quarter. And Tunisia went exclusively to a press and nearly got it to even. They got it to four points right. with about six minutes to go. And they did not do well against the pressure defense. 2-3 zone now by Iran. Last two possessions. Rudy Gay trying to make the extra pass. Right to Kazemi, who loses his footing. And Iran's going to come up with it. No, a game of uh, fits and starts with a minute 35 to go in the quarter. No real flow for either team, but the U.S. up seven. Watch out. The big fella. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> He's trying to draw a foul on his teammate, his Memphis Grizzly teammate. Westbrook finds a seam. And a nice follow by Tyson Chandler. Westbrook's strength in this tournament is his ability to get to the rim, and when you break the defense down that way, you're going to create some opportunities for your teammates. Tyson Chandler is headed to the Dallas Mavericks after this tournament, dealt in the offseason. Slow start for him in the World Championship, but getting some minutes here against Iran. Kamrani holding. And a foul against Chandler. And we will have free throws. Pick and roll defense, uh, obviously not sharp against Brazil. There's a little split of the trap. Anytime the big guy shows, you see this a lot internationally. Of course, Chris Paul and Steve Nash make a living out of that. They split the trap because you put a lot of pressure on the big guy to stay in front of you. And eight times out of ten, that's not going to happen. Kamrani hitting the free throw for Iran. 51 seconds to go. This is the first quarter of the fourth preliminary game. And a lot of support. Iran, one of the bordering countries of Turkey. Tehran is still uh, well over 1,000 miles away. 
But for the U.S., you know, you're never going to get that home court feel. Although, as you pointed out, maybe against a Greece. Maybe against Greece if they play in Istanbul. And that could happen in the quarterfinals because of the antipathy Turks have for the Greeks. And a lost ball out of bounds against the U.S. And so Iran will get it back with 34 seconds to go in the first. It's been a very interesting tournament. Spain has lost a couple of times. Big game coming up later on. France and Lithuania. It is possible as we have a whistle at midcourt. Foul against Steph Curry. It is possible that you could have Spain, the U.S., and Greece. Three teams who were very possibly the three pre-tournament favorites coming could be in the same quarter of no, the bracket. No, exactly right. There's a lot of intrigue going on. You know, we'll have to sort it out tomorrow on the last day, but believe me, these teams will jockey for position and try to stay away from opponents uh, in the knockout round. I've already heard some talk of, uh, you know, teams maybe throwing games tomorrow because they may not want to see one of the elite teams in the round of 16. Now, when you say throwing games, I guess, well, you like, mean... Like in the NFL exactly. at the end of the season when teams rest their best players because yep. they're really gearing up for the playoffs, it's very, very similar, Mark. European coaches, as we've said a number of times, they don't think tactically, they think strategically. They think over the course of the tournament and not just one game. That's very common. Remember, only the world champion gets the automatic qualifier to the Olympics. So you're trying to do the best you can if you're one of those six or seven best teams to put yourself in position to win this tournament. Otherwise, next year you'll go into the FIBA zone play and try to qualify. And for the U.S., that's the FIBA America is going to be in Argentina next year. With a chance at the eye at 2012 in London. Here's Curry late in the quarter clock, and the shot clock expired. Now that was, uh, you know, we, we that was no passes, not a recognition of the shot clock, and a turnover. Three seconds to go in the first quarter. There's the heave, no good, and that'll end it. The United States. Not a quarter they're really going to want to watch back on tape, but a six-point lead, 19-13 over Iran in Istanbul. It's available on ESPN3.com. Well, far from baseball in uh, Istanbul, Team USA trying to work through some issues here at the end of preliminary round action. Just a 19-13 lead over Iran after 10 minutes. Fran? Well, you know they're going to win the game, uh, barring something... Uh, unbelievable but it's more about how you almost have to compete against yourself you know you really have to compete about you're competing against your own expectations and execution right now because the score will take care of itself if you do the things you're capable of doing team usa with its uh, second team lineup on the floor to start quarter two a little zone right now two three zone steph curry has that kind of range Eric Gordon from the left side, knocks down the three. Now in Gordon and Curry, obviously, you got two guys that can bust up the zone. There's a near steal by Gordon. Now Laurent also going very deep on its roster. They're playing everybody. Number five, Aaron Davuti, handling the ball. Saman VC poked away by Westbrook. One on two, lays it up and in. Yeah, this is where... USA will open up this game, obviously, is their half-court defensive pressure, particularly in the backcourt. And, friend, once they open up this game, as expected, can you truly work on yes. half-court sets and yes, kind of games can, and big Mark. blocks? What you can do, every dead ball situation, you can run, assuming they have a half-court offense that they've worked on, yes, I would do that. Pascar Cardus trying to make a move in the lane, and Steph Curry fouled on the way back. There's a good example. You don't want to stop running, obviously. Any chance you can to get out in transition, that's been Team USA's game. But in the second half, particularly, Mark, on a dead ball, out of timeouts, I would work on half-court offense because this is basically a scrimmage right now. With all due respect to these Iranian players who are playing hard. And that's really a work at it there. If you're trying to work against the zone, hit the man at the free throw line. Just a missed shot there. 
Davuti with the drive. Cardew's had it knocked away yeah. by Rudy Gay. Good, that's excellent offense right there, but credit Rudy Gay, who's been an energizer. How about Steph Curry getting a hand, but a little See, too I, fancy. I would take him out right now, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking as a coach right now, there's just no need to do this. And you can tell the frustration I have watching this. This is not good basketball right here. You must keep the game simple. Keep it fundamentally sound right now. Well, we saw in the exhibition games, whether it was in New York City or early on in Madrid, was sometimes missing dunks, getting a little too fancy on those kind of breaks, and really same kind of issues. Well, as long as, as, long as you play hard defensively and play smart offensively, then you go from there. No basket to travel on Ashgar. Cardus, 6'11", Iranian. This is a young guy that's worked really hard to try to make the national team. He finally got his opportunity and uh, very excited about wearing that uh, Islamic Republic of Iran jersey. This I like is the a... jeans look, by the way, by <laughs> Coach Matic. Maybe trying to set a new trend. <laughs> Well, Coach Blatt of Russia goes jeans, who's done a great job in this tournament. He goes jeans as well. Here's Westbrook flying high, tipped up by Love, won't go down. This Iranian team coming off back-to-back uh, -back FIBA Asia championship. So they have a couple of gold medals in the chest. And the young Kazemi fouled underneath. I really, I've got a chance to watch this young guy in college last year as a freshman. You know, he doesn't shoot the ball like Omri Cosby of the of the Sacramento Kings, but he's got the same passion and energy. I talked to his coach, Ben Braun, this morning about him, and a wonderful guy. There's a Persian community in Houston that has embraced him, and also they've embraced him on that Rice University campus. Now, you're looking at a guy that averaged almost a double-double as a freshman in Conference USA. And he's doing it primarily on the fact that he plays very, very hard. The, uh, we talked about Hamed Haddadi, the first Iranian-born NBA player. He's the first Iranian to get a Division I scholarship going to Rice, studying social sciences. And a couple of free throws there, and an Iranian foul against Mehdi Kamrani. Two on Kamrani. Well, the uh, Team Iran, which played in Beijing in the Olympics in 2008, it was the first time Iran was represented in Olympic basketball since 1948. So they're starting, uh, they're becoming very basketball interested, and not just in recent years, over the last decade or so. Well, and beating China in the Asia Games is always a big deal. Now, Yao hasn't played since 08, but uh, you're talking about Yi Jin Lin, some other solid players, Wang Zhuzhu. And won those games in China. There's Haddadi making his move and a foul. Now, little nitpicking dribble penetration has been a factor uh, negatively for Team USA in this opening half. Too much, too much of uh, those guards getting a piece of the paint. You see the foul there. Haddadi's an interesting story, Mark, because he's a right-hander. But early in his career, he severed a tendon in his right hand. And he essentially had to become left-handed for an entire year. So even though he shoots the ball right-handed, you'll notice he's got a very good left-handed jump hook around the basket. A good look at Hamed Haddadi, 7'2", 280-pounder. Not getting a lot of time with the Memphis Grizzlies, but certainly, uh, I guess, as big as, if you want to say, quote-unquote, rock star in Iran, is as close as you can get. And Kevin Love puts in the basket for the U.S. up 10. Here's a guy, Kevin Love, that I still think is going to be a huge factor uh, in the knockout round because he's, a, he's what I call a no-mistake guy. He's intelligent, he understands the game, and he's a great teammate because of his screening and passing ability. And here he is guarding the bigger Haddadi. Solid. He just walled off Haddadi, made him shoot a tough shot. You know, it got some press, but he came in to guard on that missed free throw at the end of the Brazil game as Love takes it to the rack and puts it in. But his body there, too, got in the way of Landro Barbosa on that last shot. And, and by the way, averaging 28 rebounds per 40 minutes in this <laughs> tournament so far. Very productive in the minutes he's played for Coach Krzyzewski. Under six minutes to go, second quarter. 
in Istanbul. Fourth of five preliminary round games for Team USA. Kazemi for three. Arsalan Kazemi heading into his sophomore year at Rice University. 20-year-old. He was the captain for the junior teams the last few years, and with those injuries, getting a chance to play for the national team. Well, his college coach will love that outside shot. He's trying to get him to shoot that three. And Love with a tip in. You know, Kevin Love averages, we've chronicled this, 15 rebounds per 40 minutes in the NBA. Better than Camby, better than Dwight Howard, the best in the league. He's doing for Team USA what he does during the NBA season. And trying to find a daddy underneath. Turns it over. Let's take a look at the uh, goals coming into today, Fran. Obviously, half court execution. I don't care if they're up by 40 today and get a million dunks in transition. That's got to be important. Limit turnovers that are unforced, and then they will not have trouble with pick and roll defense today, but they have to have solid pick and roll schemes going into next week. And in this World Championship Tournament, if the U.S. wins today or tomorrow, we'll clinch the top seed. And Kevin Love, what a great, great time he's having off the bench right now, defensively and offensively. This is exactly why Jerry Colangelo and Coach K put him on the team. The key is to play him in key moments of close games. And a foul as Kazemi was making his drive to finish that point. If the U.S. ends up as expected with the top seed in Group B, the crossover group for B is Group A, and they would get the fourth place team in Group A, and there's still a lot to be decided. Oh, boy. You're right. But Group A in Kasseri, where Argentina leads the way. Right now, Germany sitting at number four, Angola sitting at number four, but it could be between Australia, Germany. A lot of things to be decided in the next couple of days. That's exactly right. I wouldn't want to play Australia in the round of 16. A feisty group. Hadadi chucks one up as he is fouled. Now Australia played a good game with uh, Serbia earlier today and lost to the Serbs 94-79. Now you're talking about a guy 6 7 2, 260. See they're trying to reach and grab. He's not the most mobile guy, Mark. I talked to a couple of NBA coaches this week and he would not be the worst backup center in the NBA. He's a guy that you can work with. He's not, you know, he's not going to be uh, Mark Gasol, he's not going to be Dwight Howard, but this is a guy that can be on any NBA roster as your third string center. 25 years of age. Good touch from the foul line. Hitting both. Derrick Rose, the foul was his second. See that 2 3 zone now. A little bit of a matchup out of it. Team USA has had success getting the ball to the paint area in the high post. And a turnover, a little miscommunication by the U.S., but Durant flags down the loose ball. Lob for the rim. Up and in for Derrick Rose. And we've got an injured player on the floor for a run. Now, Kamrani, who's, who's got two fouls, is important to Coach Maddich's attack. They can't afford to lose him. Timeout in Istanbul. don't know Farsi, but I heard Coach Maddich say, Rebound, rebound. <laughs> so maybe well, that's one of those international basketball words. You know, it, it brings up an interesting discussion. There are so many head coaches in the World Championship that are not native to their country. How do you communicate with your players? Well, interestingly, the primary language in basketball in Europe is usually English uh, because of the players that come from different countries. You see, Big Fell is not afraid to shoot that ball. Uh, when we went to break, Medi Kamrani had slipped, and the team doctors checking him out on the bench. Kevin Love feeling it today, and last touch by Derrick Rose as Kevin Love heads the other way. Coach Bowerman of Germany, who is German, uh, listening into their huddles this week. They, he speaks in English. Now that one I just don't understand. Well, he, you know what? Uh, yeah, they, basically they've got an all-German team, but. Sometimes, like they've had Chris Kamen in the past. That's true. Well, as you said, it's become much like the international standard right. in basketball is to speak English. So sometimes you stay with it without any English speakers. Solid VC off the bench, hitting a three pointer. His countrymen enjoyed Iran staying close with an 11. Tip ball. Durant with those long arms gets it back and puts it off the window.
Durant's got eight points in the first half. He's been a scoring machine for Team USA. And whatever team he's ever played on. You know, how good was the 2008 Olympic team? Now, I know Kevin Durant was two years younger, but he didn't make that squad. Well, he'll make the team in 2012, and he'll be one of the key guys because right now, as I said the other day, if you had a draft of every player in the world and you took into account the fact that he's 21, LeBron, what, 26 maybe? Kobe's at the end of his career. I think Kevin Durant would either be the number one or number two pick if you were starting a team today. Oh. Keeping in mind how much better he's going to get. That's the thing. I mean, he's going to be 22 next month right after this tournament ends as Danny Granger knocks down a shot. He'll be going into his fourth year in Oklahoma City. The reigning scoring champ finished second to LeBron for MVP. The biggest thing for Kevin Durant after this tournament is going to be to get some rest because Thunder training camp starts on September 27th. And he's essentially had very little time off in the last year and a half. He's such a workout fanatic that it's actually a concern. And a lot of people around the uh, globe as a shot clock violation against Iran have talked about this as the quote-unquote B team and the A team players from the Olympics, but it's probably the same sort of feel. A lot of guys had injuries. Some had surgery like a Kobe Bryant. Some had the free agency that they were dealing with before the summer began. But, uh, you know, it can be a grind playing for your national team every year. A good example of that is guys like Nowitzki and Gasol and Tony Parker have, to, uh, you know, Kirilenko for Russia. They've all elected to bypass this world championship because they play so many games during the NBA season. Andy Granger missing on the three. Cutting down the lane. Rose couldn't finish. So Team Iran with a pretty good showing for itself. Only down 15, a minute 20 to go in this first half. For Team USA, still a lot of things really to work on from what you've seen in these first two quarters. Offensive rebound, and Kazemi puts it back in. What a great experience for this young guy. He'll go back as Ben Braun builds Rice's program. Their two leading scorers a year ago were freshmen. He's on the all-freshman team, Conference USA. Spotting up for the three-pointer and missing. And then a foul by Javad Davari. That is team foul number four against Iran in, in the quarter. They talk about Pau Gasol not being a part of uh, Team Spain. They've also had some injury issues, but two losses. Big They're struggling. At this yeah. tournament. They didn't play hard, and I, I don't think they've played as hard as they normally play. There's something wrong with that team right now. That's good basketball. And call for the flop, and the three-pointer went down for Kevin Durant. Anytime you get the ball to the middle of the lane versus the zone, you force the defense to make a decision. Do you guard the ball or do you guard the shooters? And that time that ball went from inside out perfectly. U.S. enjoying a 16-point lead. Kazemi with a nice touch and a basket. Timeout with 18 seconds to go in the first half. We'll conclude the first half from Istanbul coming up. A smiling Arsalan Kazemi. In the quarterfinals, a lot earlier than... You know, many people anticipate it. Well, this tournament certainly got a very interesting with the two Spanish losses, the Turkish win over Greece. See, and, and Turkey was playing horribly in the friendly games. You know, they did not play very well, and now they sit undefeated. Last possession of the first half. And a whistle on the drive will go against Iran. Be free throw time. Third on Davari, and Chauncey Billups will shoot two in the bonus with one second to go in the half. Now, if the U.S. stays unbeaten, it'll be looking most likely like a Monday round of 16 game as Chauncey Billups hits the first of two. Kevin Durant. With 11 first half points. And with one second to go, best they'll do is a heave, no basket. 
And that's the end of the scoring for the first half. 43-28 a run. Mike Yam next in the studio. At the half, the uh, corrected score, the U.S. losing a point, 42-28 over Iran. As we get start, set for the start of the third quarter with Fran Fraschilla, I'm Mark Kestesher, back inside the Abdi Apekchi Arena, where Iran will have first possession. Was a struggle early on, a little bit better toward the end of the second quarter for Team USA. Kevin Durant with 10 points. Hadadi held to seven. And here is the big man working low. He did pick up a couple of fouls early on. Three-pointer VC won't go down. Good possession for Team USA. Defensive patience. It's important now. You know Iran is going to try to use the 24-second clock. So if you're Team USA with the lead, this is a good opportunity to be able to guard some continuity offense. And there's an Iranian turnover and Billups with the easy bucket. The defense really has not been the question here for this young squad. They, they are living off of their defense. Good to see uh, number seven handling the ball right now. Mehdi Kamrani back on the floor. Slipped and looked like uh, injured his ankle a little bit. Was worked on and back for the second half, but a turnover there. Nice bounce pass, Iguodala. I think Billups was anticipating contact, and the Iranian player just jumped out of his way. And it'll go back to Team USA. Arsalan Kazemi turning it over. Look at the coach, Vaslan Matic, the latest in a long line of Serbian coaches for the national team of Iran. And Derek Rose getting an easy flight to the basket. That would be what I would call a defensive breakdown. <laughs> Derrick Rose taking full opportunity. I, I think Iran felt good about themselves with the way they played in the first half, but it's almost like they've decided not to come out and show up in the second half. And quick timeout by Coach Matic. And like the way the uh, U.S. has come out, running off the first few points. Back to Istanbul right after the timeout. If they can get by Iran and things looking good so far, could go for the perfect uh, preliminary round schedule and a chance to go in as the top seed in Group B into the knockout round. 20-point American lead, the first six points of the third quarter. Arsalan Kazemi, number 12 in white for Iran. See, this is good practice for Team USA. Iran does a good job of running that offense. And Haddadi from the outside couldn't finish it off the window. This is what I meant earlier. Team USA gets this lead, Mark. Yes, you run when you can, but let's try to run some half-court offense if you're Coach K. Be solid defensively. Use this as a scrimmage to get better. Derek Rose, again, uh, the uncontested basket. Nice move underneath. Well, the uh, Iranians only down six after one. Good showing for themselves through the first half, but not quite the start they were hoping for in the third quarter as they try to load up the big man. Ends up in Haddadi's hands for a basket. See that left-handed little jump hook around the rim? Very nice touch. But that was a good 24-second possession for Iran. And actually, it's good for Team USA, as I mentioned, to be able to guard this long and create some integrity defensively. Iguodala and a whistle before he could go on his way. Saman Visi picking up the personal, his first. You know, we didn't mention this in the first half, Mark, but Iran is without two of their three best players. In fact, probably their best player is the young guy, Samad Nika Bamrani, who averaged 18 points a game last year. So they're shorthanded, much like a lot of these teams are with players that have injuries or elected not to play. Yeah, they thought they'd have uh, Bamrani up to a, just a few weeks before the tournament began. Injured foot out. Derrick Rose again at the rim, really uh, unable to stop him at this point. Hamed Afag also a 6'4 guard, who was one of their uh, top shooters, maybe the best shooter on the on Team Iran, also came up injured. First time in the FIBA World Championship. Another turnover by Iran, and a whistle go the other way. 
A little push by Durant, I think, in the back. Well, the ball pressure leading to this layup opportunity. And you see Durant with a little contact with Kazemi. I hope, uh, you know, Arsalan Kazemi's parents have uh, obviously not been able to travel out of Iran to see him play. But he stays in very close contact with his family via the computer, internet. I was reading a story on him. I think it was in Sports Illustrated before his freshman year. And he would go to the mall with the guys, and they would say, you could leave your laptop in the car. And he was like, no. He holds his laptop kind of, uh, I think it was described as if he were a waiter holding right. some plates. Basically, instant messaging and Skyping at all times and all locations. Well, just getting in and out of the United States for both uh, Hadadi and Kazemi is, uh, you know, takes a lot of work and diplomatic relations, I guess. And a U.S. turnover had 10 of them in the first half, and a Coach K doesn't look too pleased every time he sees one of those. Now, this is, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, this will be a huge Achilles heel next week. Are they more athletic than every team in this tournament? Absolutely. Do they have talent? Absolutely. They, but you, you can't, I don't think you can win this tournament just on open court play. And Kazemi will get to the line for a three-point play. Lamar Odom picking up his second foul. Now this young man's been very impressive. We talked about his athleticism early. Probably his greatest strength is his high motor. You talk, you talk to coaches in Conference USA, and they'll tell you he has huge upside. He's got that Omri Caspi type, you know, feel and fire. Kind of looks like Wally Zerbeck a little too. Doesn't shoot it like Wally. If he did, we'd really have a, you'd really have a good player on your hands. But. This is a great opportunity for Kazemi. See the zone now. U.S. attacks it in the middle to Durant. He's missing on that one. 20 point American League in this, American lead in this fourth preliminary game. Trying to stay unbeaten and clinch the top seed in the group. Long three won't go down. And we'll see some transition for the U.S. Odom, nice spin move, but Hadadi there to pull it off the rim. Hadadi's got pretty good hands, doesn't he? He sure does. There's a U.S. foul on Andre Iguodala stopping the clock. Seems like Andre's really had struggles figuring out the officiating, what he can do, what he can't get away with. Welcome to FIBA basketball. Yeah. You know, it's not the NBA. They, you know, you don't have people who know who you are. To, the, to these officials, he's just number six in a blue jersey. You know, you might know Kobe or LeBron or Dwayne Wade or maybe Kevin Durant, but, you know, Andre, you got to adjust. We've said it all along. You see strange things in FIBA play, and you have to roll with the punches. That's a le learning experience of... For all these players, and yeah. especially a youth, youthful group well, like this. I think this the officiating team. overall has been pretty good, you know, yeah. both ways. I mean, I mean, you could I, pick on the traveling, but it is the FIBA established rule. Well, but I also think there are times where the USA guys are not traveling; they're just not used to that quickness. Because, uh, but, 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 but the but the ultimate thing about playing in any kind of basketball situation is you adjust to the environment. Whether you're on the road or it's officiating or the opponent's style of play, you adjust. Odom taking on the big man and beating Hadani for the left-handed basket. Kazemi, pretty good ball handler for his size as well, bringing it up for Iran. You know, sometimes you wonder how, you know, kids growing up in foreign countries get their NBA. And in Iran, he said, on Friday mornings, which is the only weekend day in the country of Iran, they get the uh, Thursday night NBA game on a tape delay. And Kazemi grew up a huge Tim Duncan fan. That's that's how he got his NBA, being in Houston with Rice, a chance to see some Rockets games, and now a chance to play against NBA players. Now guys like Kazemi can thank uh, Arvita Sabonis, Marshall Onis, the Dream Team in 2000, excuse me, 1992. Paul Gasol, it's just incredible to see the way the basketball world has shrunk. And of course for the U.S. in an international competition, uh, competition that became no more apparent than the 0-2 championships in Indianapolis. 
Unable to win gold at the 04 games in Athens. See a good opportunity to see the switch on the pick and roll. Oh, that's good basketball. Ro There's a good example. Now, we, we don't have a telestrator to show you this, but Team USA's defensive rotations out of the screen and roll have been a step late for a large part. And Andre Iguodala should have already tagged the roll man up the lane early. He and Rose. When they come late, it creates space in the lane for an opportunity to score. The, the defense out front was terrific, but pick and roll defense involves all five defenders when you're defending a good pick and roll team. And the uh, view that the folks got that high angle, you don't usually get, it's a great coach's yeah, view to see absolutely. how that all came together. Andre Godala sitting with the three fouls. But Mark, you know what? This is good. Uh, you're up 20, you're going to win the game, and you're getting a team who's not talented, as talented as you are. They're running their stuff crisply in the half court. And it's almost like having a scout team right now. And then you're attacking the zone, which you're going to see in the knockout round quite a bit. Rudy Gay back on the floor. Long three on top. Poked out by Derrick Rose. Another possession for the U.S. Gay lining up a three and knocking it down. Now Rudy Gay very aggressive. That time a good open look. I've been impressed with Rudy Gay's effort defensively and on the backboards as well in this tournament. Rudy Gay coming into action and hit only four of his ten three-pointers. The U.S. Uh, with a 23-point lead. That's good. See that? That's good basketball and it's good defense. Davuti, did he get it off? They said he did, but the basket didn't go down. Uh, the, coach, the coach just yelled horns, which is an American <laughs> play. It's like a universal high pick and roll play. So we heard Coach Maddich speak English in that last time out, Mark. And an offensive foul. <laughs> Let's take a look at the uh, FIBA rules versus the NBA rules. A lot of talk about it. We know about the duration of the game and the three-point distance being shorter. Right. Foul limits as well. Touching ball on the rim, that's that's different to a lot of I US think everybody fans. knows that by now, but I, I think some of the underrated ones is, you know, what we saw, the uh, what we've seen in this tournament. Late in the game, if, if it's a live ball, the coach can't call timeout to set up a last-second play. And also the free throw line situation because of the trapezoid lane. We saw an opportunity for Brazil to almost steal that game because Huertas did a great job of missing that free throw. And Derek Rose knocking down the baseline jumper. Hadati still in the game with three fouls for Iran. As we close in on two minutes to go in the third. Now I was talking to Chris Wallace last night, the general manager of the Grizzlies, and he made the point that Hadadi, when he came to the United States two years ago, he never he got there three days before training camp. So he's never really able to get into great condition or, or, or get used to the speed of the game. Breakaway for Iran. Saman VC puts it in. And every time Hadadi comes through comes back to the United States from Iran, he has to go to Dubai and go to the American consulate to get his visa because we have diplomatic relationships with Dubai, as does Iran, but we have none with Iran because of the political nature of the situation right now between the two countries. And oftentimes he'll be in, he'll have to wait for the visa to clear, and it might take a few days. You know, sometimes people uh, have troubles, you know, when their flight is delayed yes. in America. It's a little bit different story for the likes of Hamed Haddadi and even uh, Kazemi, who's That's had right. uh, some issues as well coming through. Now, when Kazemi came to the United States last summer to enroll at Rice, he lived here for a year because he went to prep school in North Carolina, but it took him six hours to get through the customs in, in Atlanta, the immigration services. And uh, he had to explain to them that he was going to college to play basketball. And at one point, I believe he also said it took six hours, the interrogation. He almost got to the point to say, just send me home. I'll go back the other way. At the line, Mehdi Kamrani for Iran. Vasil Matic, three times national championship coach in Serbia. He's been head coach for Yugoslavia, Poland. And this is his second year as the coach of Iran.
All second unit on the floor for the U.S. Gay in the lane lost the handle. Iran not giving up. Kamrani was stripped but got it back. And the bigger Americans take it away from him. He's only 5'11". Wide open Curry. Steps in. And hits. Good ball movement that time. The drive into the lane, the kick out, the shot fake. Simple pull up. Steph Curry a fundamentally sound player. He just has to play within himself. Do the things he does well. Kamrani will launch a three. Curry saves it nicely. So half a minute to go in this third quarter. Team USA well in command, working on some issues, and turnovers have been one of the big ones. Well, you had a chance to get the last possession of the half, or at least get better in the half court, and Russell Westbrook speeding up and making an ill-advised decision. It's sort of what we talked about. If I were, the, if I were Coach K in the fourth quarter, I would tell my team, Anytime there's a dead ball or we don't have an advantage in transition, I want to run half-court zone and man offense because we know they can score in the open court. They do this as well as anybody or better than anybody in this tournament, but that will not help them next week. And once again, you must think strategically and not tactically for today. Fouls on Rudy Gay, his second. Free throws for Team Iran. Now, Coach K's got four Final Fours and a gold medal, and I have nothing. So, you know, maybe maybe that's the right way to do this. Well, again, he's also looking at a lineup that he's only, he has not seen as much. When Jerry Colangelo hired Coach K, the big deal was to put together a program like the other international programs yes. where they're seeing each other every year, and this is very unlike well, what they had played. But the culture has been really, really good. That, there's no question the culture has been great. The pride in the uniform has been big time. Rudy Gay was beyond the basket, but draws a foul, and he'll get a couple of free throws with four seconds to go in the third quarter. You know, there was a time when the LeBrons and the Boshes and the Kobe's, where if they did not come to this world championship, you know, might not play in the 2012 game, but they relaxed those rules. Once it became apparent, I don't think they figured all 12 guys from 08 right. wouldn't be here, but... Well, 100 games a season for NBA guys is hard. This is actually good that this young group is getting a chance to play together. But we saw in 2006 the struggles that Team USA had on a couple of occasions, including the semifinal game against Greece. So this FIBA experience for this younger group is certainly a big positive. Westbrook chases down the loose ball. Two seconds to go in the half. 62-39, the U.S. enjoying a big lead. A look at Istanbul and the Yeni Mosque off to the right after three quarters. Full Team USA enjoying a 62-39 enjoying a lead over Iran as Tyson Chandler knocks down the jumper to start the fourth quarter. Very nice set play out of the timeout at the end of the third quarter. Good screening, good execution. U.S. with one more preliminary game to go. Chance to work out the Kings. Tunisia. Tomorrow morning, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Off the window. The tip-in doesn't go down for Haddadi. Boy, Tyson Chandler understanding FIBA rules. Remember, he played in 2007. Rod Davuti will pick up his third personal foul. Chandler came in against Brazil and did a nice job against Tiago Splitter. And that block shot at the rim there. Take a look. This is good recognition by Tyson Chandler. That ball's up there. You can go ahead and bat it around. Watch him bat it off. That's great. As long as he knows he can't do that in about That's two right. months. <laughs> can't do that in the NBA. And Westbrook and Chandler uh, miscommunicating on that pass down underneath. Yet another U.S. turnover, number 15. Lawrence Westbrook has really struggled as of late in, in terms of his decision-making in the half court. He's such a brilliant open court player. You know, Fran, you can have all the ability in the world, but sometimes you forget 
how important it is to have confidence. And when confidence runs low, sometimes it runs into the next game or the game after. Yeah. Well, that's another offensive rebound. Good hustle by Iran. That's actually good for Team USA. They get to play defense for another 24 seconds. Djibouti trying to get loose. Now it's past Hadadi. Five to shoot. The big man being pulled down and still able to get the basket. That's his teammate. <laughs> He's laughing because did Rudy Gay commit the foul? Unfortunately, Rudy Rudy's didn't not laughing. Back at him. <laughs> well, what Hadadi did is he buried Gay underneath the rim. Watch how deep he gets the ball. He made Gay disappear on the part of the passer, so the passer had a great look. You know what? Hadadi's got no mobility. But you get him within four feet of the basket, he's, not, he's got good hands and good skill level. 7'2", 280 pounds. That's just not a good decision by Russell Westbrook. Uh, the game's in control. Now you got to show your team that you know how to understand half-court offense. Heron turns it back over. Here's a look. Pass a little too far out in front. You can see Aren Davuti and <laughs> Vassal and Modest. In any language, it's, we don't need language for that. And another wow, uh, intentional that, foul. That might have been an intentional foul on De Steph Curry. Take a look at the steal here. Well, that's a tough call. That's a tough call. Unless you, I, we couldn't see the right arm from our angle on that on that low angle shot. So if, if Curry was grabbing him with that right arm and holding him. But, but, I'm sorry, Mark. You, you heard me say this a couple times. Sometimes in a game like this, you're not playing Iran, but you're playing yourself. And you have to do the things that the coaches want you to do and, you know, and have practiced. So right now, the score is irrelevant for this, this USA team. It's about doing the things that you have to do in order to improve so that you're ready to play next week, which is the only thing that matters. Right. Going 5-0 and right now is a given. It's, it's about how are you developing your team next week. There's no real equity in 5-0 and except for a seeding. You'll get a high seed. You'll That's play right. a lower seed in the round of 16. But then once you get to quarterfinals, semis, and the medal games, nice play I'm by Donnie. telling you. Now, there's worse backup centers in the NBA, I'm telling you. He's not going to ever be a starter. No way. The Iranian fans enjoying this, and Rudy Gay will silence them a little bit with a three-pointer. Good screen there. Good open look by Rudy Gay in rhythm. Sixty-seven forty-five as Westbrook will get a breather. Danny Granger back out on the floor for Eric Gordon checking in along with Danny Granger. A lot of look for the bench, which struggled against Brazil. Five to shoot for Iran. The big man turns and fires and misses that time. Big man had the 24-second clock in his head, so that was a smart move. Basket Eric Gordon. They give him the continuation. He'll get to the line. You're not going to stop Eric Gordon if he's got that much room in the open court. Watch the strength and power of Eric Gordon. Ahmed Adani picking up the foul, his fourth. As Javad Davari checks back in. Eric Gordon's free throw good three-point play for Team USA. And so the lead builds to 25. Down court. VC, nice pass for Kazemi who throws it down. Right now, Rice coach Ben Braun just jumped out of his chair in his office because Kazemi has handled himself very well. Great look. Wow, Tyson Chandler going up high. If you use Tyson Chandler wisely, which Coach K will and has, he does what he does. He, he protects the rim and he can make those, catch those lobs. 
And Chris Paul had uh, something good going in New Orleans a few years ago. Played in Charlotte last year. Now the Mavericks. Now to Dallas. Yeah, the Mavericks have added Tyson Chandler. They've got Brendan Haywood. Jay Kidd back. Of course, Nowitzki healthy. Yep. Taking the summer off. Jet Terry's got a little left in the tank. Western Conference should be interesting. We'll see how San Antonio changes with a splitter joining the group. Pavetta Dottie with another basket. He's got 17 points. He's ecstatic right now. <laughs> he doesn't play. He hasn't played this much in three months with the Grizzlies. He, he had a big basket against the Cavaliers late in the season, and the Grizzlies upset Cleveland at home and went into a restaurant downtown, probably Beale Street. And when he walked in, all the Grizzly fans gave him a standing ovation. <laughs> Well, we mentioned earlier, he's not quite the shack of Iran, but he did have a cameo in a TV drama, so I mean, he, he is kind of rock star status. Don't know if you caught Mokhtar Name, the, uh, not on your cable not or satellite. No. Didn't have that package. ESPN2's coverage of the 2010 FIBA World Championship continues tomorrow morning, the final preliminary game for Team USA. They will get Tunisia, 9.30 a.m. Eastern. Tunisia winning the uh, FIBA Africa, the Afro Basket Tournament. They're a great story. We'll look for them tomorrow. Here's a replay on the last basket for Team USA. I know you're looking forward to seeing Radouan Sleep on, yes. Yeah, who looks like my chemistry teacher back in high school. He's got some game though, right? Yeah, he's well, got I don't some know game. if your chemistry teacher in high school did oh, too. He got, well, he's, you know, he looks like James Taylor a little bit. Yep. Looks like a guy that plays down at the local Y, but uh, that's the 24 teams in the world championships from six continents. And for teams like Iran and Tunisia, this is, uh, this is a happening just to be around this level of play. Well, if you talk to anyone in America, it's all about the Olympics. And in the Olympic basketball tournament, there's only 12 teams. In the world championships, you have twice as many. And around the world, Fran, this is actually a much bigger tournament than the Olympics. Well, it is. It is. And at the same time, because of the grinds of the NBA, you see a lot of our NBA players even passing up on an opportunity to represent their countries in the world. And a traveling call against Iran. Turnover, Eskar Karduzch. Adadi's back up, getting his first chance with the national team. Well, the U.S. has not won this event since 1994. It's their 16th time participating. They do have 10 medals, which is right up there with the most countries in the world, but only three golds, which speaks to not having their um, A-plus team at every World Championship. Well, I remember up, up until 1992, we used college players to uh, re represent the United States at the World Championships. And then when professionals were allowed to play in FIBA, 1992, we saw the Dream Team. 94 was a Dream Team 2. Right. Here's a three-pointer on the way and an air ball from Javad Davari. In fact, Coach K coached the last group of college players back in 1990, a team that was uh, beaten in the semifinals by the Yugoslavia team that we've chronicled with Divac and Petrovic, Tino Raja. Short shot clock there off the inbound, so Iran had to hoist one up the other way. Kevin Love, who had a big nine off the bench in the first half, gets his first basket of the second. Five to shoot for Kazemi. Missed on that one, out of bounds. Coverage of Major League Baseball continues. Wednesday Night Baseball at 7 Eastern time. The Yankees, who uh, have first place in the AL East against the A's, and then Giants-Dodgers, the Sunday Night Baseball game. That'll be on ESPN2 HD, 8 Eastern Sunday. All games on ESPN3.com. As we uh, turn the calendar to September, Yep. and the uh, pennant Big races in baseball. Big night for A.J. Burnett tonight. That's I'm right. not sure how much longer Joe Girardi is going to go with him. And Granger hitting the basket there. Yeah, Burnett, uh, nine runs allowed in his last start. So we'll all watch together on Wednesday Night Baseball tonight, ESPN. Right here, three and a half minutes to go in Istanbul. 
30 point U.S. lead trying to go to 4-0 in the preliminary. Kazemi hangs. The last touch U.S. And you can see some frustration for Team Iran, but uh, really put their best foot forward in the first half. Couldn't have expected much more than that playing against the caliber of competition they are. Well, how about the big fella? Is, is this fun or what? Chris Wallace is in Israel right now, the general manager of the Grizzlies. He's doing clinics over there. I talked to him last night. He had a lot of great things to say about this young big guy. And you know what? He plays. You can see the joy in his face, Mark. You know that he can go back and play. He's got this is the third year. Look, he's handling the ball. He's playing point guard. <laughs> well, Lionel Holland's allowed to do this. <laughs> no, no, he will not. But he can go back and talk trash at training camp. Believe me. Well, he's going to have someone cut up the uh, Rudy Gay play oh, where he yeah. held him and still scored. I, I wouldn't want to be the video coordinator of the Grizzlies right now. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you're good friends with Rudy. Oh, yeah. the turnaround doesn't go down for Haddadi. As Haddadi's going to say, I want that clip of that play where Rudy <laughs> fouled me. <laughs> Steph Curry on a nice pass, but through the hands, they'll say last touch by Iran, so the U.S. will get it. 2.34 to go, fourth quarter. Well, we've got a two-play. We'll see uh, if we can execute that out of the out of the inbounds. Looks like uh, Saman VC coming out. Kamrani in. VC may be a little banged up it's baseline drive for Gordon can't finish on the dunk thought he got a foul and they will whistle the foul against Iran and VC is uh, being laid down off on the bench as you can see it's like a thigh or a hamstring he's struggling on the uh, sideline Little contact. Around Davuti fouling out. That was his fifth foul. He's out. So Saeed Devar Pana, number 14 for a run, has been seeing a lot of time in this championship. Two twenty to go. U.S. will clinch the top seed in B with a victory. And still one more game to go against Tunisia. Kevin Love knocking down the outside jumper. Now they don't need Kevin Love to score, but he's been very productive today in terms of his offense. But Kevin Love, the rebounding, the screening, you don't have to run plays for him. If you look at positives, Kevin Love's among them individually, but for a team positive. You know what? They were going to win this game. They, they did what they had to do. Uh, yeah, I thought their defense was really solid. Iran made them guard uh, in the half court for 24 seconds, and that's a positive. Steph Curry getting a basket underneath with 1.38 to go. Timeout in Istanbul, the conclusion of this preliminary round game coming up next. 2010 FIBA World Championship with Fran Fraschilla and Mark Kestischer, all USA against Iran. As we come down to the final 135, the Next to last preliminary game for Team USA. Tunisia tomorrow will cap it. Adati's bounce pass taken away. Down court love. Nice touch pass. And Westbrook puts it down. Terrific look by Kevin Love. He's such a he has such a great feel for the game, whether it's an outlet pass, a screen, or the little touch pass right there. A UCLA connection. He's going to be the high scorer for Team USA today off the bench. He's pretty prolific in the minutes he gets, isn't he? Haddadi. And love another rebound. Under a minute to go before Team USA makes it an official 4-0 start to the tournament. Granger from the outside knocks one down. Ten. Right now, if you're Team USA, you're the coaching staff, you start getting the video of your round of 16 opponent. They'll win tomorrow, and you have to already start planning ahead, and they'll get the extra day off. They won't play after tomorrow, Mark, until Monday. So that's time to sharpen up some things that you're going to have in your arsenal as you get ready.
for a one and done situation. And just so folks know, if they don't already, the top seed in Group B will get the four seed in Group A. Could be uh, it could be Australia or Germany possibly. We'll know a lot more tomorrow as they let time run down on an 88-51 U.S. win over Iran. We'll get some final thoughts from Fran Fraschella's coach Shashevsky and the rest of Team USA shake hands with Iran after a big win in Istanbul. In Istanbul, USA goes to 4-0 in preliminary round play, 88-51 over Iran. With Fran Fraschella, I'm Mark Kestesher, and as we look back at this fourth preliminary round game, Kevin Durant again has a big game. We're going to look at Group B first as they now go to 4-0 and and have clinched group number B and is our group letter B. You'll see B1, that's the top team in group B, will get the fourth place team in group A once we get to the round of 16. And here's how group A stacks up as of right now. Argentina has the lead. You see Germany and Angola both one and two. But Germany, they were playing a very tight game and in the final seconds, Germany has the lead, so it could be Germany who has a tiebreaker against Australia, Fran. Germany, Australia, absolutely. That first round game will be tricky. I'd, I'd rather play Germany. They don't have Dirk Nowitzki. Australia very feisty, but Germany also very well coached. A lot of intriguing stories if we get to the round of 16 with either team. And now Kevin Durant, uh, when needed, coming up with some offense. Well, he got most of the second half off, but as he has done throughout this tournament, a great start. All-around game for Kevin Durant, scoring, passing, rebounding. He's been solid defensively, and that uh, international three is a drink of water for Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant with 12 points. There you see him. Also, Kevin Love, big game off the bench at 5 of 6 for 13 points, 6 rebounds as the USA wins 88-51. to 51. Our next game tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. Eastern, ESPN2. The U.S. will take on Tunisia. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Fran Fraschilla and our entire ESPN crew, I